Um, since both of the first year and second year biochemistry groups are well within writing up or thinking, certainly thinking about starting to write up your laboratory reports, I thought I'd do a review of the best way to do equations in reports. Uh, some good ways and some bad ways, and I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, I've got some equations here, the weight percentage of casein in milks from the first year, and there's a couple of equations there, Michaelis and Malai Weaver Burr from the second year kinetics experiments. Uh, now you can probably figure out what's happened here just by looking at it, but if I turn on the punctuation it becomes quite obvious what the person who's done this has tried to do. Uh, they've just typed this as a piece of word text, underlined that bit and tab this bit along until it's more or less under the uh, under, under under the line. Um, it doesn't look particularly good, does it? Um, there are better ways of doing this. Um, I'm not quite sure what's happened here, but one thing you can obviously say about this is it looks a bit small. Can I make it a bit bigger? Um, see what happens when you try to drag it and make it a bit, bit bigger. It all goes pear-shaped. I'll do control Z to put that back. And the third approach uh, is simply to find a, an equation somewhere and copy and paste it in. Well, you can do that, but it doesn't really demonstrate that you've thought about uh, equations you use and then uh, attempted to understand them. Um, it's much better if you do equations yourself using the tool which I'm going to describe here, which is called Equation Editor. Uh, before we go there, I'm just going to split the screen at the two. This what I'm going to do is redo these equations using the equation editor. So I'll just make a bit of space. Uh, okay. Um, equation, people who've been using Word for a, a while may have used equation edit in the past, and in the past it was rubbish, frankly. Uh, it's now a lot better. Um, so where is this? If you go to the tab, tab thing and you click on Insert, You'll see right over your equation, click on it, and it opens up this new menu bar. Okay, so down here, it's opened up a little window for you to type in. And we're going to type the equation with the percentage yield of casein. So what it says type equation, you just type percentage yield of casein. Now those of us who have used Word before will now be going, well that's better. Because in the past, when you tried to type text in the equation editor, it behaved rather strangely. You wouldn't separate stuff into separate words, for example. Uh, it works quite nicely now. Okay, the next thing we want is this fraction, which I, I'm not going to add error everything in. I'm also going to adjust it as well, because it's not how I would have done this. It's, it's, it's not actually correct. Uh, if you go up here, there's a little menu for fractions. There's a number of options, including some ones from Calculus. Uh, we're going to put in this one, the most simple one, the stack fraction. Okay, so in the top one. We've got weight of, uh, our friend above has put sample, but you need to be more specific than that, so we'll put casein. Um, he's putting grams there, which I'm not going to put in just to save a little bit of time, but you probably should yourself. And on the bottom, weight of milk. Okay, if you press end, it'll take you to the end of the equation. Okay, so what I want to do now is put in a multiplier. Um, I'm just going to do a simple one, which is just the star one, and times it by 100, to give it a percentage, which it didn't do before. Uh, right, now, how to continue this equation down? There's, there may be other ways of doing this, but I've found that uh, Shift-Enter opens up a new equation line beneath. Uh, so we can type, uh, I should have actually copied that, but I didn't, so percentage uh, yield of casein. Is equal to uh, again we put in a fraction. Uh, this time we put in the numbers. So I'm not going to put. I'm not, I'm not going to put in the whole lot just to save a bit of time. So 8.32 divided by 1.01. Again, press the end key. Times by 100. Oops. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to continue the equation on the same line. So I'm going to put in 100, and then I'm going to put in the answer. 8.24%. Okay, so that's uh, straightforward and it looks quite a lot more, more professional. Uh, if you want to make these a bit bigger, uh, these are just basically a font. So if you just select them and go up here, it's Cambria Math, and we can change them up to, say, 14 point. That was quite nice. You can also go in and edit individual parts. Uh, it always defaults to go in towards the sender. You might want to bring it off to one side. I'll put in a, a tab to put it somewhere near the middle, somewhere, somewhere near, but not near, the, not right at the side. 
Okay, so we'll just insert a new page. And we'll continue this with the next equation, which is the Michaelis Menten equation from Enzyme Kinetics. Okay, um, pretty much the same approach. Uh, once you've started this, you should be able to do certainly simple equations in no time at all. But V0 is equal to. Um, you can you can do subsets and, and superscripts here, but I'm just going to do uh, that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it a zero as well, uh, a naught rather than a zero. Uh, so I want a fraction in next. It's just a fraction we've used before. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces in the fraction. So the max. Oops. Deleted the fraction there. Beg your pardon. V max. Uh, plus the concentration of the substrate uh, over the Michaelis constant Km plus again the concentration of the substrate. Um, now that took no time at all. Okay, you can say it took slightly more. In fact, I, I would suggest it took actually rather less time than finding it somewhere, copying it, and pasting it in. And it looks rather more professional. Um, the only th other thing I would mention here when you're talking about equations is to always uh, define the terms used so I was talking there about that couple so we've got V0 is the initial rate V max is the maximum rate uh, bracket S is the concentration of substrates and K is the Carlos constant uh, and if there's any units you should also mention the units as well uh, particularly when you've done, done a calculation okay moving on to the final one which is the Langweaver Burke equation right from the Carlos a bit more complicated. There's a few sort of a couple more. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple more um, equal signs, and we, which we actually saw being put in earlier. But we'll go through how we do this. Uh, so we'll go, again, we've got to insert insert equation. Um, start off now. We're starting off this time with a fraction. So we go up here, insert the fraction. One over v. And press the N key to take us to the next bit. Equals insert another fraction. Um, now if I thought there I could have copied the Michaelis Menten equation couldn't I? But I didn't think. Um, but I would have saved a little bit of time. Because it's, it's the same as the Michaelis Menten equation as you can see. In fact we do, what we we're actually doing is just redoing the Michaelis Menten equation and then deriving what is the uh, Langweber Burke. Okay, go to end again. Uh, equals so it's saying that this is the, effectively it's taken the double reciprocal plot of the um, of the Michaelis Menten equation. So we start off with another fraction. And actually, in this case, is Km over V max. Now, if you look at our friends up here, what he's actually done in there is not include a multiplication sign. There's a multiplication sign there. So go to the end. Now we enter then the multiplication sign. And then we enter the next part of the fraction. And one of them is such a concentration. And again, press the end key. Uh, plus fraction. Oops. One upon. And there we go, the Michael, the Landweaver Burke equation done in not a lot of time. And of course, when you've done that, you can, and if you need it again, you can easily copy it and paste it into uh, your new document. And so there we are. I hope that was useful. Thanks for listening.